Hi, welcome back to another episode of, well, first episode of Every Game Ever. Third attempt. This is the charm. So, for Zelda Month, last uh, last year, uh, I, Josh Card, decided to uh, do Legend of Zelda Link to the Past Randomized. And uh, my best friend Terry thought it would be fun if he came on and helped me out for through some of the more boring parts to make it a little bit more interesting. This was <coughs> my idea. You baked me. You said, oh man, the viewership's going to go up if I have your handsome face on. May or may not have actually happened. But... So we figured that this would be a good, also good starting point to try to start off a more regular Let's Play series. So this month for Zelda Month, not only will we be playing Legend of Zelda Link to the Past Randomized, but I also found a randomizer for the original Zelda game, and I'm not as good at that one, so it should be really interesting to see whether or not I can uh, make it through all the way. I... I don't... I, I don't have faith in you, I'm going to be honest with you. Alright, so should, I'm going to... Uh, something English in four letters. Words. What about fair? Uh, fair is in like she is fair, or let's go to the fair. She is fair. I guess those are the same one. We could also do like uh, toll or attacks. Yeah. Yeah, but it's fair in Japanese. Yeah. What races? A little bit, maybe? I don't know. They don't, they don't have the R. They, they literally don't have L's in their language. Alright, so this is the first thing. This is what I was telling you about with the randomized. Normally, when you open up that chest, there's a lantern. Today, we get 20 bucks. Fucking terrific. So, you've never actually played all the way through this one, have you? No, I think I've only watched you do it. I mean, I haven't watched you play all the way through. I've only watched you play this is. I, a Genesis. I would have killed for a Sega Genesis when I was a little kid. That was. I, I would have killed for a Super Nintendo. We should have been best friends. <laughs> <coughs> I remember one time uh, I was hitting up this kid to hang out, and uh, he, I was like, "Hey, you want to come over to my place and play video games?" And he's like, "What do you got? Like Sega Genesis?" And he's like, <laughs> and he didn't want to come over and hang out because the N64. You know, to be fair, it seems like the Sega Genesis really didn't have a lot in the way of, like, multiplayer games. It was all very much arcade -y. Ooh, good, a green potion. I've got nothing to use magic with, but I got a green potion. At least I got the bottle. That'll be handy-ish. So supposedly, um, and I brought this up last time I played this, but uh, the randomizer, the people who, work with, who made the randomizer, had supposedly set it up so um, key items like, uh, will still show up where they need to. So, it's not like they're gonna randomize, like, the big key out of the dungeon. Yeah. And make it so you can't beat the game. So, like, they'll just randomize the location of the big key, the map, the compass in any dungeon. These guys are really bad at their job. Yeah, I think you sat me down and had me play either Zelda 1 or Link or, 2. Uh, you the uh, Link's Adventure, the, the second one. Yeah. Was, it, was it a side scroll or like a top down? Top down. It'd be the first one. Huh? All right. Okay, I got a key and a key. Fuck yeah. That's two keys, Harry. Good. Let me cut around over with keys. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Way to make it biblical. I don't remember what, if there's a part in the Bible where it actually talks about my cup runneth over. Is that what, I, mean, I swear to God that's biblical. It might be. It could be Shakespeare for all we know. To be yeah. fair, there's a lot of stuff that you think was in the Bible that aren't that isn't. So I, I did. Uh, I I remember I was in a in a lesson once. Uh, I, I like specifically like a religion lesson, and uh, the person I was with spent like 20 minutes of the lesson trying to find. Uh, a passage of the Bible that talked about the windows being the eyes, the eyes being the windows to the soul. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's a quote by Winston Churchill. I was like, no, it's in here, I swear. Yeah. And then he gave up because it's not in the Bible. <laughs> That's not a thing. Yeah. Well, at least Shakespeare, you know, because of his old English and the Bible is kind of old English. Well, it's because it was written then. It's also filled with all sorts of translation errors. Yeah. Like, it, not not necessarily saying, like, the, the words they used was wrong, it's just they didn't translate any phrases into English phrases, yeah. which is an important part of translation. That's part of the reason why it's so hard to understand the Bible, yeah. is because it'd be stuff like, uh, 
like in Arabic, you like the phrase, like it's cold out, like it's cold outside, or it's getting cold outside. You'd say it's colding outside. Yeah. And they would just throw in like, yeah, it's colding. You know. This one you're able to draw. You know. It's a bird. Like it. Yeah. Well, it was you know a lot of the translations weren't perfect and. Well, then you've got like a billion monks writing it, like a scr a scrolling down like a billion different scrolls yeah. and coming up with shit on their own. As all that. When you have people, I like, got a map. Nice. I thought you wanted. Yeah, I thought you had some. Fail. <laughs> <coughs> it's amazing how they can get Kanji to show up in uh, on this. Like a lot of that is just the hiragana or the uh, the romanji. So it's like it looks nice. And it's really easy, it's very clear to read, but the, but how complicated, like, kanji can get, that's the one where, it's like, each character is, like, a whole word and a concept in and of itself. Yeah. It's amazing they can get that to fit. Realize we never started a timer. I'm sure the timer now. Alright. I guess we get a look at Alright, so the first episode's gonna be a little long. Yeah. Terry, you're in charge of the timer. Alright. Oh, God. And you dropped it. <laughs> We're off to a great start. <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said the third time trying the Let's Play was a charm. <laughs> Next one we post is like, seventh time's the charm. There's some we didn't post. There's a lot we didn't post. You're so good at damage. <laughs> uh, you remember Greg? He was the best. I wish I wish he was still with us. Uh, yeah. It's a shame the boom mic fell and impaled the threat through a skull. Yeah, it was That was a quite expensive boom mic too. Yeah. You know, it was <laughs> you know, and for those of you that don't know what boom mics look like, they're round. It was it had like a soft spongy cone, but apparently like yeah. it hardened overnight and just yeah. penetrated. Oh, it was And he had a soft soft skull. Got dropped when he was a baby. We call him soft skull Greg. I we regret that. Especially since, roll now. Well, especially since we kept referring to him that uh, to him that as that at, at his funeral, and that was well, you know, that was their fault. They shouldn't have had us give a duel eulogy. They really should have ha invited us at all. Really, we barely knew him. Yeah, I mean, his first day on the job, he died. <coughs> so here's a here's a thought. Why would the princess know that there's like a hidden passage back here, and why would it be so inaccessible to a single person? Right? It took two people to push that. Whatever the hell that is. Oh, aside. Right, but there are two thrones there. So there's going to be the king and the queen. Oh, so the king and the queen are going to be doing their own heavy lifting because we know kings and like we know royalty are all are very well known for their immense upper body strength. <laughs> well, both of these people are under five feet tall, so that's actually true. Uh, according to the Hyrule Historia, Link from uh, Ocarina of Time is five feet tall. The reason why Ganon looks so tall and impressive is because he's about the, uh, he's about our height. Yeah. <laughs> Which explains why he's about the same size as Captain Falcon. Smash Brothers. So, uh, Smash Brothers is when I first found out that Samus was a girl. Uh, it wasn't for me. I remember the... You know, maybe it was. It was around that time or something when somebody was talking about Samus. And... They're like, oh, you know, Samus is a girl, right? I was like, what? No. And they're like, yeah, man, I was playing the game, and uh, she totally takes off the thing, and she's in a bikini, and it's so hot. Which, yeah, you ran with a completely different <laughs> like circle of friends than I did, for sure. Like, what I, how I found it out. Well, it's, so, neither of us ever played, like, a Metroid game before in our lives. Uh, before, at least before that point. I don't know about you. I've played all of the Metroid games since then. I have only played the first Prime, and uh, the Hunters one that came out with DS. Oh, that's good. Ending. And the first one that uh, came out for the DS, the first came out. You got the you met you got Metro Prime Hunters. I I had a a demo. Yeah, I still have the demo. Yeah. 
I, 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 okay, so I haven't played all of them. I haven't played Metroid Pinball. I haven't played that one, and of course I haven't played the one that, ju like the one that just came out, the uh, Samus Returns, yeah. as opposed to Return of Samus, which I have yeah, a poster. It's funny that like they can't. They've announced so much and come out with so much this year because just it, a couple months ago, you and I were talking about that there could that there was a possibility there would never be a Metroid game. Yeah, and then they so they uh, came out with uh, Samus Returns, which apparently was part of. Part of the reason why they see indeed the uh, uh, AM2R uh, fan game. Uh, so they made so a bunch of fans over the last nine years made uh, Metroid 2. It was one for the yeah. game original Game Boy. Yeah. They remade it with updated like gameplay and everything in yeah. Game Maker Studio. Yeah. And like a day after they finally released the roof of their labor, Nintendo slammed them with the C and D. Yeah. And so they had to take it down. Which of course, thanks to the Strizendic effect, I'm sure you can still find it. Yeah. But. Uh, I guess that was the reason why is because they were working on their own Metroid 2 remake and, they did, and they're like, oh fuck, this is totally stepping on our toes. Yeah. And they also announced uh, Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. Which should be interesting because Met Metroid Prime, the, the the whole Prime part of it is deals with Phazon. And in the end of the third one, they actually destroy all the Phazon in the universe. Yeah. So it should be interesting to see how they eat out a fourth game there. Alternate universe? I doubt it. I'll bet you it's just going to be like, which it's Metro Prime Four in the sense that it's a first-person shooter adventure, but no, it's and not it's a like, continuation of the story. I, I don't think it's going to be a continuation of the Prime series, uh, like per, like as far as story goes. Any more? I think than, it'll be the same Samus. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, well, the Metro, the Metro Prime series <clears throat> is like a small story in and of itself. You know, it's dealing with Samus and her exploits, trying to stop the spread of phase on the galaxy. Oh, bombs, I can't use those. Um, you know, like, all, like the, most of the Metroid games really don't have a lot to deal with each other other than the recurring themes and the fact that they are part of a continual storyline. Yeah. Uh, except for Metroid Prime, uh, except for uh, Metroid uh, Other M, which, if we take canonically, means that a lot of other games can't work. It, it retcons a lot. Which is a game we totally need to play at some point. I've heard really mixed yeah. reviews. It's a, very, it's a very polarizing game. Like, most people hate it. And that is true because it, it bastardized Samus. But mm. supposedly the gameplay is really not that bad, but I've watched gameplay Is that videos. the one where they put her in the... No, no Zero. They put her in the Zero suit. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so... This is, like, right, because I didn't know much about that, and then, like, I was randomly playing the new... the newest, um... Smash Bros. Bros. And, it, yeah, and it goes to, like... Her in a in a swimsuit or I guess like athletic suit shorts. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's uh, the zero suit is essentially like the the skin tight suit she wears underneath her big bulky armor. Yeah, which I mean that makes sense, right? Yeah, um, like you, you wouldn't just be like wearing jeans. At, ooh, parties. You wouldn't just be wearing jeans and shit in there. No, but at the same time, oh good, I got the flute. She has like it's kind of like. I don't really want to see Iron Man running around without his armor. Then don't watch that. Uh, don't watch the Iron Man movies then, because he does that kind of a lot. Don't watch Iron Man three. Right? Yeah. Does a lot of in the suit in the first. Episode. Well, so so the whole idea of the Zero Suit Samus was uh, Metroid Zero Mission was a remake of the first game, right? right. And so they fleshed out a lot. And threw in a lot of elements from Super Metroid, and then they decided to add like an entire like extra bonus thing at the very end, yeah. where it's like when you think you've beaten the game because okay that was where the first Metroid ended, it continued unexpectedly where like she, like she got shot down trying to leave, and since she'd already taken off her suit for the end of, because she thought the mission was over, uh, she ended up uh, it ended up being like uh, like she kind of caught caught with her pants down, yeah. kind of literally. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, so she had to stealth her way back uh, through a space pirate ship to get her suit back. Yeah. Because, like, they salvaged, salvaged the wreck and everything. Right. With the bottle, with the heart piece, fire rod. Alright, so, so far I haven't gotten anything that I can beat the first dungeon with. The, the first part of this is going to be gathering up all the treasures that I can right now. But I did get the flute, which means this should be interesting to see if I can sequence break this. Um, let's see here. I've got 300 rupees so I can talk to this guy and buy what should be a bottle. Oh, fuck yeah! I got the hookshot. Yep, that's gonna work. Well, this is gonna save us a lot of time. 
because this will give us the ability to warp around high roll, which you usually won't get until like three quarters of the game. Well, that duck man asked me. <clears throat> so when we were at Target the other day, they had uh, some Pokemon cards, and apparently they have a Koala Pokemon now. And I just got to the point where I realized I, I probably don't know the latest two, three hundred Pokemon. Yeah, it feels weird to like know that you're at the top of your game on something before, and like you know nothing about it now. Yeah, it'd be like it'd be kind of like I, this must. This is gonna sound kind of pretentious. This must be what like uh, like college level like science people must think. <laughs> like they're like I used to know everything about about like astrophysics, but it, uh, the the field just moves so fast. I stepped away for like two years, and suddenly everything's changed. They discovered nine hundred planets, <laughs> and apparently one of them can like evolve in the opposite direction or something. <laughs> but my mouth was breaking down. Yeah. <laughs> well, wasn't that essentially what? Uh... Ninja Brian said when he when he quit teaching and went to um, Game Grumps full time, where he just said, where they asked him, like, oh, are you ever going to teach again? And he's like, if I'm not teaching, I won't be able to stay up. Uh -huh. Yeah, stay up to date and things. I might be able to lecture, but that's about it. Guest lecture of a guy who sings a, who makes music about dicks. Yeah. What do you know about astrophysics? Not as much as I used to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of reminds me of like a Dr. Townsend from Scrubs. Uh, oh, Dick Van Dyke? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, kind of a sad episode. Oh, it totally is. Especially since Bob Kelso is the one who has to kind of come out with the moral of the story in that one. Yeah. Well, I think that was a great Kelso episode, though. Oh, we was. see that, yeah. I mean, because we always saw that Kelso was never trying to harm the hospital. He always did what he thought was best. But what always he thought was best was money. Well, he was... To be fair, he also... He, like Jordan, also kind of delighted in the in the uh, torture of others, so... Yeah. That's that. Okay, let's see here. I've gotten... I think I've gotten all of the treasures that I can here. That thing is a bad word. <laughs> I was gonna say bitch, but then I had to, like, correct myself last time I played this. I'm like, that's misogynistic. That's not fair. I don't know. I think they're... I mean, they're bastards. I don't know if they're to no, because technically a bastard is just anyone who's born out of heritage. See? I went up to talk to her to apologize, and this shit happens. She called the cops on me. Let me in! You owe me an apology! <laughs> See, this is, this is the reason why. Yeah. The reason why what? You just kind of... This. That's the reason why. Oh, that's the reason why she's a bitch. Look, I accidentally coke bottle. Is that bad? Me a coke bottle? Accidentally a coke bottle. Okay. Okay, so I'll come back there ever again. Oh wait, I've got the Pegasus boots already. No point in getting, uh, like showing up again, but, I mean, 70 bucks. No, that's, um, that was my favorite Yahoo questions I ever saw. And that's like, um, it was just some random, like, 12-year-old kid's like, I accidentally an entire Coke bottle. Is that bad? <laughs> and then the follow-up question was like, you accidentally what? And the response was, a Coke bottle! <laughs> <laughs> I would just be like, there's so many questions here. Exactly is this true? So that's why I love it so much, is because it's just like, yeah, what, what was the question? So I found something- It may be bad! <laughs> I found something super interesting last night, but I can't find the actual, like, and I can only get half the story. Forward. So, I was on, uh, I was on YouTube, and I was watching Stephen Colbert, and, um, Jon Stewart was on. Mm -hmm. And down in the corner was, like, this, uh, it was, like, Seth MacFarlane talks about his feud with Jon Stewart. Okay. So, I stopped, and I watched this video, and it talks about, like, during the writer's strike, Jon Stewart did a, did a live show. This is all the way back in 2008. Yeah. And apparently, somehow, Seth MacFarlane called him out on it on Family Guy. And Jon Stewart called up and yelled at him for it, and they got him to her. And I don't know if they argued or if they just, like, had a conversation, debated or what, but that was... Essentially, what it was. 
what we have. But I couldn't find what this joke was. Like, what joke they made against. Yeah, and like, yeah. considering like both of us watch Family Guy pretty regularly, Yeah. I don't really even enjoy, enjoy the show so much anymore, but it's just nice to have on in the background when I'm doing yeah. shit. Yeah, it's... Like, if I actually sit down and watch any of the current episodes, I'm kind of disappointed. Which is like, if there's anybody who works on Family that watches this, which is pretty vehemently, I'm sorry. But, but if, it, if that person is Seth MacFarlane, uh, totally reach out to us. Yeah. A, I love the Orville. He's I'd get to watch it. I'd, I'd love to watch it. I just, I don't watch TV much. It's like, the Orville just gets, gets it. Anyway. But yeah, I like, there's... I heard the Orville had like a really rocky first episode. Though. Oh yeah, the first episode is, is a little hard, in, in all honesty. It's just kind of, I mean, and I think the big thing is, um, the way they advertised it, they really sold it as Galaxy Quest. Yeah. And it's not Galaxy Quest. Mm. Like, uh, you know, it's, there's, it's Star Trek with some dick jokes. Yeah, see, I'm, I, I thought it was gonna be Galaxy. Like they they, they sold it, they sold me yeah. on Galaxy Quest, and with Seth MacFarlane, Seth MacFarlane is pretty funny. I just think yeah. he's milked Family Guy. But you yeah. know, you know how we knew that it wasn't gonna be a comedy show. What was because it didn't have a talking animal. <laughs> My like, biggest thing is uh, that's like Seth MacFarlane's said... form, oh, Seth MacFarlane formula. It's like you get uh, like a nuclear family, and then just throw in a talking animal because that's comedy. Oh well, that's just the left of the that's just a leftover of his, uh, you know, his original uh, yeah. cartooning days. Yeah. Well, and like that that show we tried getting off, off the ground on Cartoon Network that didn't yeah. that didn't stick. But it's like okay, well, like I get that for Family Guy. Yeah. And then they kind of recycle the same premise for American Dad with the Alien. And yeah. then they kind of recycle the same premise with the Cleveland Show with the, his bare neighbor. I mean, yeah. they're all just different enough that like he could be like, no, no, it's 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 different. It's different. Well, American Dad though goes in a really different direction from either of the other shows. And no, it's true. A pretty, different sense of humor. Like, even the sense of humor that existed in the first season oh, is this, gone. This third. Is, you see this? I, will be, I, I, I wouldn't be able to do this normally. But you know what? I could probably go straight to the last dun dungeon and think of it. Because I can go straight to the uh, top of the mountain. Uh, straight to the top of the mountain. Yeah, what you need to. I'm trying to think if there's, if there's anything that I need to beat that particular dungeon that I don't already have. I mean... You need more parts? I can always use more hearts, but there's no good guaranteed way to get that except for beating, uh... Fuck! No! Put me down, you bastard! <laughs> oh, shit. Uh... Oh, fuck. Stop! Stop with the random movements! Oh, god! Just, just go in the... Yeah, there you go. I was trying, <laughs> but those things can jump right over! Okay, this guy will heal me. Heal me. Um, I think you know what they say. Well, to be fair, uh, this is old enough where it doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah. Uh, come to think of it, so he, that that guy is actually you're supposed to meet him at the bottom of the mountain, and yeah. you, you lead him to the top, and then he gives you in the original game he gives you the magic mirror, which lets you yeah. travel back from the dark world if you get if you get stuck there. Yeah. So I wonder, like, okay, no one's here. Cool. Teleporting, yeah. Uh. He just, uh, he's just, he's one of the. So the story is Aghanim co like collected se the seven, I'd say like princesses or whatever, like the like the seven daughters of the seven sages who once sealed away Gan, right? And by sealing all of, of it, like like. So sending all of them to the dark world, they're able to bring the ideas that they'll be able to bring Ganon back. Okay. And his daughter was one of the ones that was one one of the ones that was taken, and that's kind of his role. He went from like a really helpful old man to just like, thank you for mowing my lawn. Here's twenty. Yeah. <laughs> Remember one time my neighbor uh, paid me to mow his lawn, and I kind of underestimated the job. And so I offered low, and he was like, no, that, that's too low, and he paid me a little bit over. But even for the work that I did, like, that was still kind of low, and so his wife gave me extra. Because it was like, they hadn't mowed their lawn in, like, a month. Maybe more. It was kind of ridiculous. Like, just how, like, not speaking bad on them on the, on, in any means, they were nice people. 
But in, in, thing, in case you're watching. Yeah. But the uh <laughs> Well, I just wanna like, man, he's always in this these people paid him to do a job and he like badmouthed them. No. But it was like it was like a month long and I had to um like you couldn't on some of the big patches, like I couldn't take the mower over it, otherwise the mower would clog and die. So I had to kind of like lift the mower and kinda of like mow like kind of kind of take it up like the like uh Use your word. tipped back. There you go. Take it tipped back and kind of <coughs> mow over those areas and kinda of like slowly knock them down until I could get at it. Alright, so I've got everything that I need to beat the first dungeon here. Generally the fun part about this is being able to beat the gate is beat the game in different ways. Uh, but I'm just gonna do this look this way. Because I know I can get through because I have the bow and arrow. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I can't. No, I have the fire rod. Fuck it. Let's, go, let's do Dungeon 3. Let's do Dungeon 3. Let's level a little. <laughs> I like how this seems like it's gonna be the most exciting part of your day. No, like a year here. I fucking hate those guys! Look at that Koopa Troopers. Um. So here's a question. Uh, Do you know which one of these is a continue? So one of them started the house, one is started the old man's cave, and one is like exit the title screen. I believe this. Oh. I, I want to say this one is the cave. That was the title screen. Okay, here we go. That's Fail's house. <laughs> I believe that's... The old, the old man in the cave? That's gonna be Death Mountain. Oh. Yeah. Alright. All right. I recognize the kanji. Alright. You can recognize patterns. Okay, so one was continue, one was save and... Well, one was save and continue, one was save and quit, the other was, like, quit without saving. Okay. Thank God you quit save and quit. Holy shit, right? Yeah. Well, I knew for sure it wasn't going to be the last one. Alright, no matter yeah. what happened, the last one wasn't going to be it. Even though, uh, ironically, it was the right choice. And the, Oh, fuck, I don't have the glove, so I can't... Mm -hmm. What do we got we would have just, like, kept going, or we would have reshot this mm -hmm. episode? I mean, because if we reshot it, it just we would have been we probably, I think we would have just reset. Yeah. I mean, That we, would have been a really bad episode for the people at home, though, because we would have been a little pissed off, and... I think we would have been able to recoup. Yeah, eventually, it would, but it would, it would have been a warm up. Okay, yeah. so I guess I can't do that yet because I just realized I don't have Titan Smith. I mean, there is one thing I can do. I'm sorry, I know I'm zipping all over the place, but I'm just abusing the fuck out of this flute. I love it. Uh, I'll go here. Don't worry, I'm watching. Okay. We're at 21 minutes from when we started, so you're great. Right. I like how I have like all of like the quality of life upgrades already. Ah, uh, hit and run, bitch! So you're kind of like the teenager that started off rich. Yeah. Yeah. The only only difference is that My I parents bought me a Cadillac because it's safe. But it's like. <laughs> The only difference is, like, I've played this game enough to know what it's like to not have those, instead of just oh. being like, ooh, well, I can go straight to the second dungeon now. Um, you know, I'm not, lo I'm not that person who's like, Ugh, my parents are making me pay for my own gas. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what, so, Mike was never like that, but, um, like, when he got that, uh, the Jag, because, um, All right. I don't know if he just wanted the Jag or how that came about, but it was within the price range of what his dad said, and it got good gas mileage, and so and it um, had the safety features and stuff. And so it was like, yeah, you know, this is this is a great idea, and they thought it was. But the problem was, it was, like, it was so expensive to fix. Mm -hmm. and, um, he got hit twice, and his dad just didn't want him to drive the car anymore, because he's like, this is too expensive. Well, if he got hit, then wouldn't the other people's insurance pay for it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if his dad just was... I don't know if he, he was lying. No, he was lying about it. he got hit. Like, yeah, some guy came out of nowhere and I T-boned him <laughs> at a stoplight. <laughs> no, I think both of them he got rear-ended. And, but yeah, uh, 
I don't know if he ever really knew the reason why his dad didn't want him to drive it. He just thought it was like bad luck or something. You gotta find out many years later. It's like, no, my, it turned out that it was a curse of the Jaguar. Like that his first, like his firstborn son would die if he ever drove it again. He's like, oh, no, Mike, no! Uh, you're forbidden from driving the Jag! <laughs> It's like some Utah warlock has cursed a jaguar. The Utah Jazz Gypsy. <laughs> that was a really bad mascot choice, come to think of it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is a question that I thought of earlier that I wanted to ask the people at home. Um, so in Utah, you know they can't things, answer, right? Like, well, they can answer in the comment section below. So yeah, like, I do this. So like, comment, and subscribe if you want to like uh, answer my question and, and get so, and get more information about Terry's question. There shouldn't really be more information because I'm going to give clarify. you everything. All right, whatever. So in Utah, they have these places that like serve dirty sodas or uh, like they're mixed drink sodas. They're 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 like yeah. uh, trying to revamp the soda fountain concept by yeah. offering sodas that you can't get at like literally anywhere. Yeah, so they'll put like different syrups and stuff in them, like, and they're really popular out here. I want to know if they're popular anywhere else. Yeah, is this, a, is this a revival happening across the country or just yeah. in a place where it's like... Because soda's kind of like the, is kind of the dirty, you know, that's that's the, the addiction out here is, you know, everybody's like, oh, you know, I can't be without my soda. You know, I have, I know lots of people are like, oh my God, don't let me be without my Diet Coke. I can't be without my Diet Coke because it's kind of... But I don't know if that's around the, in the country. But God the forbid topic. you drink a beer every now and then because alcohol's addictive. Yeah. Um, so this should probably be some backstory. Uh, Utah has a lot of Mormons, and Mormons don't drink. What? Utah has Mormons? Nobody in, nobody who watches this is going to know that. I know, right? Yeah. Well, it, it, to be fair, they started in New York, so... Fuck, who knows? Yeah. But, um, so, the the issue here that, that's going to be bewildering, and the reason I bring that up is because it, it, it explains, it informs the problem yeah. that we have here where, um... We have something called the Zion's Curtain. Terry, you want to explain that? So originally what what it was, was the Zion Curtain was supposed to be literally like an, a wall or um, a divider that blocked... Like a frosted glass window. Yeah, that blocked the area in a restaurant where they made drinks. So you'd go into an Applebee's and instead of just having the bar at the Applebee's, you would have like a bar, but there'd be like a glass wall around like three the quarters bar. of it. Yeah, around the bar area. So there would be the eating area on the outside, kind of horseshoe ring area, or horseshoe area, and then on the inside, that's where people who, you know, were getting stuff from the bar would kind of be. I mean, you could get and stuff from the bar anywhere, but you couldn't see it from anywhere. That was the We also have a state-run liquor agency, which I think it's just us in Virginia are the two states in the U.S. who has that. So you can't buy... You can't buy anything above 3.2%. So you don't have to go I just know you can't buy liquor at the grocery store, and that yeah. blows my mind every time I travel out of state. I'm like, you can just buy whiskey at Walmart? I, don't, like, I, went, to the, I went to a gas station in, in Evanston, and they had, yeah, they had like a full liquor cabinet. They had beer on tap. That you, they'd fill up growlers for you. I, my mind was blown. I was like... If this wasn't Wyoming, I would live here. Because <laughs> there's not very many... I think it gets Wyoming, there's not very many people there. Just like... I mean, I'm not saying there's a lot of people in Utah, but I'm used to... Backpedaling. Yeah. Backpedaling. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with Wyoming! Well, Wyoming's great! It's not like Colorado! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Colorado, you're okay! Sure, you guys gave up when you got to the Rockies, but... I, God... You know, it's just not as bad you know, as Montana! God throw, and, damn it! Yeah, that's who I would throw. I would throw Montana because there's less people in Montana. That's, that's the safest way. Yeah, but every, every single person in Montana is armed. Oh. <laughs> We're just getting <laughs> so many comments that it's like, don't travel east, boys. Yeah. You know, but there is, like, um... You step foot in Montana, we'll kill you. <laughs> we'll get you dead. <laughs> Uh, but in Utah, you can get local beers over 3.2, but it can only go up to like 4. You can't get a 5% local beer. And uh, uh, if you have a brewery, you can't sell your beer on premises. But without the... Without you, also having a restaurant. Yeah, so that's why there's so many brew pubs in Utah, is because that's the only way they can serve their you know, own beer. Yeah, their own beer. So it really sucks because there's like a beer that I really like called, uh, what was it, the uh, Uinta... Was it that Pilsner that was from yeah. Moab? Yeah, Moab, Moab Pilsner. And obviously, I would be totally down to travel all the way down to Moab just to just to buy it. But 
For those of you that don't know, that's about a five hour drive. Yeah, we are. It's, it's like the opposite end of the state. We're on the north yeah. end of the state, and we'd be basically driving down to Arizona to get it. Yeah. Um, and I'd totally be down to make that trip, but it's not like I could be able to buy it at their brewery. Oh, and the great thing it's, about it's having state-run liquor stores is they're a business like everything else, but you figure that since they're state-run, they would at least have some consistency? No. Not at all. There is, I mean, besides the very basic things like Sam Adams and Jack Daniels and and Svedka and stuff like that, there's no guarantees. Like, even the local stuff, there's not really a guarantee. So anyways, what's happening in the game right now is in yeah. the first dungeon. <laughs> We've talked about everything but Zelda, out for Zelda month, on this mm -hmm. entire first episode. <laughs> but you know what? Um, we'll make sure to talk more about Zelda next time. Flavor content, you know. Restaurant. But yeah, if you like this episode, like, comment, subscribe, or just subscribe. You don't have to comment. Give me a thumbs up, though. Don't give me a thumbs down because it'll hurt my feelings. Yeah, and please answer my question. Are there, like, these dirty soda shops? Is yeah. Like, soda revival it, around the country? I need is, is that a thing? Is that happening everywhere else? Or is that just here because people, like, like don't want to actually drink? Yeah, they're literally, like... There are three within in, a mile yeah. of my house right now. Yeah. There are a ton of these things, and some of them charge up to six dollars for a soda. This You're is like a 44 ounce, but still. Yeah, but still six bucks for a soda. What is this, Applebee's? <laughs>